In terms of feeds and speeds, speeds and speeds can be associated with either an operation or a tool. Now, each toolpath operation type has a feeds and speeds tab in the dialog. And this allows you the flexibility to design the feeds and speeds values which are specific to that operation. So that is how you would set feeds and speeds for a specific operation. And then in terms of feeds and speeds for a tool, in our mill and turn modules, you can also define the feeds and speeds for every specific tool that you have. And this allows the flexibility to have different tool definitions based on the type of material being cut. For example, wood, steel, or acrylic. So in summary, there are two methods. You can associate feeds and speeds with an operation, or you can associate feeds and speeds with a tool. And Uday will show you how this is implemented in our applications. Thank you, Krish. Uh, hello, folks. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, good evening to uh, all of you and you know, thank you for joining us for this webinar. As uh, my colleague Chris pointed out, we'll be trying to make the webinar more interactive here as we are planning to uh, uh, switch between the slides and the application to kind of go through each and every uh, aspect of it, uh, what we're going to be covering in Feeds and Speeds today. Now, um, what we're going to be covering here is going to be applicable to all our CAM products, whether you're running Visual CAD CAM, or you could be running our plugin for Rhino, which could be Rhino Cam, uh, Visual Cam for SolidWorks, or even our Alibre Cam product. So the um, the content would be very similar, uh, depending on whatever Cam system you're going to be working with uh, that you're currently using. So uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and talk about how we could set feeds and speeds. Our operations in here and I currently have our visual CAD CAM application open and I hope you're all able to see it and as Chris pointed out if you do have any questions uh, during this webinar you're welcome to post those questions and we'll try to get them answered for you now to establish uh, feeds and speeds in an operation uh, once you have a part designed or you have a part imported into your uh, visual CAD CAM application you could go into the machining operation type that you're looking to program so in this particular example I'm going to choose uh, profiling as an operation in here and um, you can establish your feeds and speeds in the feeds and speeds tab by selecting the feeds and speeds tab in the machining operation dialog so each of the machining operations we have under two three four or even 5-axis has a tab for feeds and speeds where you can establish your spindle RPM. You can set the direction of your spindle. This could be clockwise rotation or counterclockwise rotations. Uh, this is typically output as an M3 or an MO3 uh, for clockwise or M4 or MO4 for counterclockwise rotations. And then you can establish your plunge, approach, engage, feed rate, cut, retract and departure and I'm also going to go over uh, what each of these parameters represent with an example here uh, your uh, entry motions uh, are make up the approach and engage feed rate and then the uh, exit motions make up the retract and the departure feed rates and then your cut motions are part of the cut feed rate your plunge motion is the motion from your uh, clearance plane down to your first cut level and then the transfer motion is as you transfer from one cut location to the next uh, where you re, you know, wrap it from one location. It could be set to uh, uh, use rapid, uh, which could be using your rapid feed rate that's defined in your uh, machine tool, which is typically we output as a G0 for rapid. Or you can use a set feed rate and you can specify a value for it, uh, which will be output as a, a linear motion G1 uh, along with the feed rate that you specify in here. So uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, take a look at how each of these uh, you know parameters can be set in here so I'm going to go ahead and define a tool I'll just add a end mill half an inch flat mill specify the tool number I'm going to hit save and now as you go into this feeds and speeds tab over here you can specify your spindle RPM for each operation so this is one of the ways how you can specify it and I'm going to enter in uh, the feed rates in here manually I'm entering it in for a plunge approach engage cut departure I can also set the feed rate for transfer or I can set the rapid feed rate that's uh, 
used in the machine for rapid motions. I'm just going to set it to 100. Now these feed rate parameters that you're defining in here are also used for estimating your machining time as well. And we'll get to that uh, you know, at a later part of the webinar. I would then establish the other parameters for my cutting conditions and I'm sure you're familiar with most of these parameters in here. We could establish your cut levels and all the additional parameters and then the entry and exit. So we have the entry motions, we have the approach, engage, and then you have the retract motions as linear retract and departure as part of exit. So as you generate the toolpath in here, you're noticing uh, the, the different type of toolpath motions. The, the toolpath motion that appears right here in yellow is your plunge motion and your plunge feed rate is applied right in here. So whatever you specified for your plunge feed rate under the feeds and speeds is applied for the plunge motion. And then you have your engage feed rate. So the engage, uh, you have your approach feed rate and then the engage feed rate. So the approach and the engage are part of your entry motion. So it's set to lines and arcs in this example. So you can see that the approach motion is defined as uh, a, in a quarter inch and it's set to be tangent. And the engage motion is set to be radial in this particular operation. So if you choose engage motion to be radial or linear and you go back and generate the toolpath, it's going to be applying the feed rate that you specified for your uh, engage motion. And it's followed by your cutting motion which applies the cut feed rate that you specified. And then finally you have your a retract and the departure feed rates which are part of the exit parameters under your entry and exit tab. So you can find each of these parameters and the corresponding feed rates that you have defined or specified in here would be applied uh, for the feed rate motion. So you could establish your feeds and speeds for each operation, for each operation level. So you could be programming one or more profiling operation and each operation could have a different setting for your feeds and speeds. So this is uh, one of the ways how you could specify feeds and speeds in, in, our, in each operation. Now, we also they, have uh, some... I just want to break in here. Uh, you, this might be a good, uh, good time to show how we can customize the colors of these motions. Sure, I'll certainly do that, Joe. Thank you. So, um, by default, uh, the colors for each of these toolpath motions, the plunge, approach, engage, um, cut, retract, and departure are represented these using these standard colors in here, but you can go back and change those or customize them by going over to Preferences and selecting color. So in the preferences dialog you have color and you can specify the color. You can see that the plunge motion color uh, can be changed. You can just click on it and pick a different color from the color palette or you can even go to more colors and you can use standard or from the custom colors. So you can uh, pick a color for these and this will retain those settings what you specify. So uh, likewise you can specify the colors for the approach motion, the engage, retract, departure, rapids, and also arcs. Now you'll notice that in this particular example here, the um, the retract motion is appearing in a uh, arc. Uh, it's a dark blue color because the retract motion happens to be an arc, so it's using the color that's assigned for the cut arc motions. So if you had used a retract motion that was output as a uh, a linear, then you would be seeing the colors that are specified in here. So you can use and customize these colors for the cut motion, the plunge, the approach, engage, retract, and departure. And as you make a change to any of these parameters in here, so if I go back to entry and exit, change the retract motion type from radial to linear and generate it, you will now notice that the uh, retract and the departure motion colors are now updated based on what is set in here in your color preferences under cam preferences. And each of these can be customized and you can uh, save those settings so those will be retained and you'll have the same settings on the files that you're working with. Now post-processing these operations will output the corresponding feed rates that you specified. So I'm going to go ahead and do a post and you'll notice that your plunge feed rate which I put in was 10 inches per minute your approach 15, you have your engage feed rate of 20, the cut feed rate right in here and then you'll see your retract and the departure feed rates and you're seeing the G0 motions for all your transfers or rapids being output as rapid feed rate, rapid motion. So there's no feed rate output on a rapid motion if you're using use rapid for transfers. 
Now the next thing I'm going to talk about here is how we can specify feeds and speeds to a tool. And we'll use the same example in here. So I could go into the tool tab which is located under the machining objects browser and you can create a new tool or you can edit an existing tool. Now if you're not able to locate the tools tab or the machining objects browser make sure you click on tools and machining objects and that will toggle the visibility on of the tools and machining objects browser. You could select a tool and as you go over to uh, the tool type in here you can select the tool type and you have over on the right side you have two tabs you have the properties where you can assign your um, tool properties like your tool number your number of fluids your material or for the tool and then you have a tab for feeds and speeds so you could specify your feeds and speeds right in here where you can enter in your uh, spindle rpm so I could specify the spindle rpm uh, specify the plunge feed rate can also specify uh, the parameters for the transfer feeds and as I select save edits to tool since I'm modifying an existing tool I'm going to save edits to tool now the feeds and speeds are saved with this particular tool in here now, as you program a machining operation rather than having to go through the process of specifying the feeds and speeds over here manually you could choose to load from the tool and the feeds and speeds that you specified on the tool are automatically loaded in here so you can specify the feeds and speeds for us uh, for each of the tools that you have defined and those can be loaded in uh, with, automatically into an operation now we have what's called uh, preferences for feeds and speeds and you have these settings for the preferences and by default it's set to load the feeds and speeds when you program a new operation the feeds and speeds are automatically set to be loaded from a tool so what this means is as you create a new machining operation so let's say I want to program a chamfer operation and I go in to create a new tool for a chamfer operation I'm going to specify a chamfer taper angle and as I specify the feeds and speeds for this and save it out in here so when I go ahead and program a new operation the feeds and speeds will be automatically as you can see here will be loaded from the tool and that's the default setting which you will find under preferences, cam preferences and feeds and speeds. So automatically it's set to uh, fetch the feeds and speeds values or parameters that you specify based on a tool. Now uh, we can also choose to have it compute the feeds and speeds based on a feeds and speeds file or use the last use default settings uh, for feeds and speeds. So if you had a an operation program with a certain settings it'll use the same settings for the subsequent operations you program. You also have the ability to automatically use a percentage of the cut feed rate for plunge, approach, engage, retract, departure and transfer feed rates and we'll get into these details as we talk about in a few couple of uh, slides down where we talk about how we can establish feeds and speeds based off a table. Wow. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand this back to Chris who is going to cover uh, you know, one of the you know, other slides and we'll uh, talk about those topics as well. Well, one of the questions, uh, there was a question regarding uh, which takes priority, whether the operation uh, feeds and speeds or the tool feeds and speeds. So let me explain that while, while it's, uh, it's switching to Chris here. Uh, it's always the operation uh, feed rates that you see in the tab, the feeds and speeds tab of the operation is what the operation will always use. Uh, the settings that you use in the dialog are just to load the feeds and speeds into the operation so when uh, when you select load from tool the the settings will be automatically imported into the uh, dialog here and and the operation at the end of the day is going to use what's seen in this tab so and these up these feeds and speeds are going to be archived with the operation and that's what it's going to use 
I hope that that's clear. Thank you, Uday. Thank you, Joe.